Welcome to Reality Scoop, please hit that like button and notification bell. Clicking subscribe would be a great help too. It's free for you, but means the world to us. Thank you. Now on with our video. Once upon a time, there was a land called Sparkle Mountain. It was filled with singing flowers and giggling streams. Sunbeams danced on the meadows and fluffy clouds looked like cotton candy. It was a truly magical place. But high on top of Mount Shimmer, the tallest peak in Sparkle Mountain, stood a gloomy tower. It was guarded by a grumpy dragon named Ferdinand, who quite frankly wasn't very fond of sunshine or giggling streams. Princess Poppy, with her sunshine yellow hair and a smile that could light up a room, was trapped in that very tower. Ferdinand had snatched her away while she was tending to her pet unicorns. Because princesses in Sparkle Mountain have pet unicorns, obviously. <laughs> I've got a sweet tooth and I've heard Princess Poppy makes the most delicious chocolate cake in the entire kingdom. So naturally, the only logical thing to do was to kidnap her and make her my personal pastry chef. Now, Princess Poppy had a secret admirer. She was unaware of his identity, but she often found little gifts and notes left for her in the enchanted tower where she lived. These tokens of affection always brought a smile to her face and made her wonder who her secret admirer could be. His name was Prince Percy, and he was madly in love with her. Percy had admired Poppy from afar for a long time, enchanted by her kindness and beauty. He dreamed of the day he could finally reveal his feelings to her and win her heart. Percy wasn't your typical knight in shining armor. He was known for his clumsiness and often found himself in awkward situations. Despite his shortcomings, his heart was pure, and his determination was unwavering. He was a bit clumsy, and his idea of a noble steed was a slightly overweight but very cheerful pony named Buttercup. Buttercup was not the fastest or the most graceful, but she had a heart of gold and was always ready for an adventure. When I heard about Poppy's kidnapping, I knew I had to do something. The news spread quickly and my heart sank at the thought of her in danger. I couldn't bear the idea of her being held captive, so I decided to take matters into my own hands. I grabbed my trusty spoon because... Well, I'm not very good with swords, and I knew I needed something I could handle. The spoon had been with me through many adventures, and I trusted it more than any blade. Hopped onto Buttercup, and set off on a daring rescue mission. The journey was long and filled with challenges, but I was determined to save Princess Poppy. With Buttercup by my side and my trusty spoon in hand, I knew we could overcome any obstacle and bring her back safely. Their journey was fraught with peril. Okay, maybe not peril in the traditional sense. It was more like a series of bizarre and whimsical challenges that tested their patience and sense of humor. We encountered a grumpy troll who refused to let us cross his bridge until I beat him in a game of hopscotch. It was a sight to behold. A troll hopping on one leg, grumbling all the while. I had to summon all my childhood skills to win that game. Then, they got lost in a forest filled with singing mushrooms that wouldn't stop serenading them with off-key tunes. The mushrooms sang day and night, their melodies echoing through the trees, making it impossible to think straight. It was like being trapped in a never-ending, out-of-tune concert. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, and after Percy had eaten his weight in magic mushrooms, we managed to find our way out. Percy, of course, was in high spirits, literally and figuratively, thanks to the mushrooms. We reached the foot of Mount Shimmer. The tower loomed above us, and perched on a ledge, guarding the entrance, was Ferdinand. Ferdinand, the dragon, was not your typical fire-breathing menace. He was more interested in riddles and tea parties. But that, of course, is a story for another time. Ferdinand roared, flames erupting from his nostrils. Halt, who dares approach my humble abode? Percy, not easily intimidated, cleared his throat. Um, hello there, Mr. Dragon. I'm here to rescue Princess Poppy. And well, I also brought you some chocolates. Ferdinand stopped mid-roar. Chocolates, you say? You see, Ferdinand had developed a terrible toothache from eating too much candy. The mere mention of chocolate made his heart and his stomach flutter. Percy, sensing an opportunity, offered Ferdinand the entire box of chocolates in exchange for Poppy's safe return. He knew that dragons had a notorious sweet tooth, and he hoped that this would be enough to sway Ferdinand. The dragon's eyes widened at the sight of the chocolates, and Percy could see the internal struggle playing out on Ferdinand's face. Would he choose the chocolates over his captive? Ferdinand, unable to resist the allure of chocolate, readily agreed. 
the temptation was too great, and the promise of such a delectable treat was more than he could bear. He imagined the rich, creamy taste of the chocolates melting in his mouth and knew he had to have them. Deal, he rumbled, his voice echoing through the cavern. He scooped up Princess Poppy with his giant claw and gently lowered her down to Percy. The princess, though initially frightened, quickly realized she was safe and smiled gratefully at her rescuer. Percy caught her in his arms and they shared a moment of relief and joy. And so, Prince Percy rescued Princess Poppy, not with a sword or a magic spell, but with a box of chocolates and a whole lot of luck. It was an unconventional rescue, but it worked perfectly. The two of them laughed at the absurdity of it all, knowing that their story would be told for generations to come. They rode back to Sparkle Mountain on Buttercup, where they lived happily ever after, eating Princess Poppy's delicious chocolate cake. Buttercup, their loyal steed, trotted along the path, carrying them safely home. The castle at Sparkle Mountain was a sight to behold, with its glittering towers and lush gardens. With Ferdinand, of course, who became their official cake-tasting dragon. Ferdinand, now a friend rather than a foe, enjoyed his new role immensely. He would often be found lounging in the castle courtyard, munching on chocolates and offering his expert opinion on Poppy's latest cake creations. The three of them formed an unlikely but happy family, bound together by their love of sweets and their shared adventures. Thank you for watching our content. I hope you enjoyed it. We here at Reality Scoop certainly had fun creating it for you. Please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also please push that notification bell to be notified when new content is released. We upload every Friday 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you.